comments from this particular public hearing, but uh, <coughs> uh, we are open to all answers uh, or answering any questions and responding to uh, public concerns and questions as they as they're presented. Um, so specifically, uh, uh, this meeting pertains to four levels of Are you going to do a presentation on the? Uh, Either that presentation now or after the public uh, after the public uh, hearing. Either way, um, we go ahead. Uh, why don't we go ahead with the, with the uh, presentation now? And uh, if there's anything from the presentation that uh, uh, draws any questions from the public, we can respond to them. Um, this is a, we're going to kind of roll in the public hearing and the special meeting uh, item number. That's what, yeah, that's what it would be. Sean, good morning. Good morning. Okay. Let's get us started here. So, this slide here, you've seen this quite a few times. These were just the options that we were researching, um, which led us back to the 412 um, with, with three trips. And this sheet, you all have a copy of that, and it has all the information cost to run the routes and the uh, projected ridership. Um, we've also added a startup cost page and uh, we've separated out uh, the Whitby portion and the Camino portion and there's things to consider uh, like retrofitting the, count the counting areas. Neither one of the facilities have the ability to do that at this time, so that's something we would have to retrofit. Um, bear box equipment, security, should be cameras and um, things like that. Uh, counting, sorting, and storage. And then with those, there would be some ongoing cost, uh, such as armored car transport internet bandwidth which we have an issue with right now so if we're adding more to it um, it's like we're running through a, a pipeline of this big if we add anything else to it uh, we, we run into the, some areas where we have things drop off lines so we would need to increase that bandwidth um, can I ask just a question mm -hmm. before you move on that when you're on that bandwidth thing you know, one of the things on an agenda coming up is the um, the upgrade to the mountain route match thing is going to also increase the hands on our capacity. Have you included that in your just your thought process, your analysis, given what we may be doing here on the fair plus that? Um, plus yes, the route match. Okay. Yeah, they're gonna be two separate issues. Um, but we have we have but you that you have the to expand the bandwidth in our yes. system. Because what we're talking about here is the internet bandwidth, yeah. um, and that's for like the cameras and, and data streaming. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we have like separate servers for a route match, okay. things like that. Thank you. Yeah. Why wouldn't you just go to the fiber, Sean? Well, we've looked at the fiber, and that's something that, would, that they're researching. Um, I don't know enough to. to call out what we have here, but I think we, we were using some form of fiber. And on Camino, um, we've been researching that. Um, they would have to install it, and then we'd have to pay for them to bring it over. And we were given some different quotes on that, so we're trying to get some updated quotes. So that may be a possibility still as well. Um, okay, and so to the meetings, we held a total of four community meetings. We had five scheduled. We had to cancel one due to power outage on Camino. Uh, there are about 37 people in attendance at those meetings. Um, Jill Johnson and Rick Hannell both attended the meetings as well. It was a good turnout, good conversations. And these were some of the concerns uh, 
from the public, and we said we would relay those to the board, and I'll just read through them. Um, they wanted to know where we came up with the $2 figure in line. Um, they wanted to know if there would be reduced fares for <coughs> elderly, for veterans, for disabled, and youth. And these were all at different meetings that each one of these topics came up at some point, <coughs> and that was a big one. Um, will there be monthly passes? Will there be transfers available? <coughs> When it comes to the transfers of the very first meeting, we talked about the fact that that didn't look like it was going to be a possibility with Skagit Transit at that meeting. So I think the word got out on that. Uh, will Orca users be allowed to use their cards on Island Transit buses? Uh, the answer to that is no right now. Uh, are we being forced by the state to charge fares? That came up a couple of times. What is the percentage for fare box recovery necessary to satisfy state requirements? What if we don't reach that percentage? Will we charge a fare for local services? And what are we doing about Saturday service? Camino had some concerns of their own uh, regarding the 412. Uh, if we reinstate the 412, how many trips will there be? They were told there would be three trips. Participants didn't feel like that was going to do any good whatsoever. Um, three round trips. Three round trips, yes. Um, they wanted to know why Skagit Transit just wouldn't meet us at the I-5 park and ride. What size bus would we use if, if uh, the 412 were reinstated? Then, will we set up this system and then a year from now um, lose all of it by not getting funding? They wanted to know how real of a possibility was that. So, today is the public hearing. Um, we offered staff, or uh, we offered the community um, ways to give us feedback such as the online surveys, um, company email, and the Island Transit website, as well as comment cards. Um, again, today's the public hearing, and then we inform the community that the board would vote on this matter on March the 28th. Um, and it would be on the reinstatement of the 412, as well as poss possible implementation of fares on the routes 411W, 411C, and or the 412. So here um, we had 350 uh, surveys turned in, which we thought was just outstanding. So again, we had 37 people at the meetings combined, and then we had uh, 350 of these surveys turned in. And here's my page here. So this one's the Route 4 11W, which goes from Oak Harbor to Marches Point. And we asked, we, we took a few of the basic questions that we thought might be pertinent for the board. Uh, do you commute between Island and Skagit counties? 72% said yes, 28%, 27% said no. Um, what was the <coughs> primary purpose of your travel? 51% said work, 13% uh, said school, 14% said leisure, 10% said shopping as well as medical. During a typical work week, how many days do you ride? highest was 16% at one at less than one day a week and also three days a week. If you are unwilling to pay a fare, how will you commute in the future? Drive my personal vehicle, 36%. Just wouldn't go. I wouldn't be able to go to work, 41%. And 22 said they would carpool. Now, Sean, that doesn't say they wouldn't be able to go to work. It says they, they wouldn't go. go yes. So they may not go shopping or they may not go leisurely. But, right. but it 
looking at that, the people who would carpool or drive their own personal vehicle encompasses the amount of people who would be going to work? Yes. Okay. Yeah, they would just not go to work. I, I mean, I, some of them may not go to work, but I just want to be clear that it's not, yeah. okay, yeah. Uh, would you be willing to pay two dollars to travel one way between Whidbey and Marches Point Park and Ride? On this one, we had 38% said yes, 61.8% said no. So up at the first slide where it says, "Do you commute?" and mm -hmm. and then that percentage, I can't remember what you said, like 28-ish or something percent. Yeah, so 72% said yes. yes. 28%, so how does that 27.8 play out in the rest of the questions, right? Do they keep, did, did they stop answering or are they still saying when we get down to would you go or not? Are they saying no, I wouldn't go because they're not going already? And, and are they still factored into that answer? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure on that one. I don't have the, the answer for that. C. That is from Terry's Corner on Camino Island to uh, Statue Station in Mount Vernon. So we ask again, do you commute between Island and Skagit counties? And 77% said yes, 22% said no. What was the primary purpose of your travel? 36% said work. 19% said shopping, 15% said medical, and 10% said school. During a typical work week, how many days do you ride the route? 28% said less than one day a week. Um, and then the next 16% one day a week, 16% two days a week. you are unwilling to pay a fare, how will you commute in the future? Drive my personal vehicle, 32.5%, would not go, 47.5%, carpool, 20%. Would you be willing to pay $2? Can you know, you know, Sean, I'm going to come back to that one again. Okay. So what was the percentage on those who would not go on that item? Uh, 47.5%, 47.5%, they just wouldn't go. So that means they wouldn't go shopping, or they wouldn't go to a doctor's appointment, because uh, there's just a small percentage of people who work on this. Mm -hmm. So we, yeah, that's something we'd need to clarify on that. Yeah. Back and look at it that, that seems skewed to me mm -hmm. uh, about the need and uh, I don't know too many people are writing the bus for pleasure. At least the percentage is going to show that. Would you be willing to pay $2 to travel one way between Camino and Mount Vernon? 58.2 said yes. 41.8 said no. And that again is, is an interesting comparison to the previous one, the 411W. Yes. Um, it's almost, not quite, but nearly just the opposite. Um, we pay sales tax. That's what. I think. Our riders on Whidbey pay more sales tax than riders on Camino pay because Camino doesn't have to meet taxable items. So their willingness to pay is higher. But we have a population that feels like they've already started paying. You know what I mean? Especially on the North Whidbey route, because well, Oak Harbor yeah. pays a disproportionate share of the sales tax to support the system. <clears throat> I, I didn't look at it that way. I'm just looking at the math. What is the cost of the alternative? I think most of us look at the cost of the alternative. If I drive, is that going to be more expensive than if I ride the bus? And how does the convenience factor play into that too? And uh, so I don't know how to <coughs> read the opposite numbers here for the two routes. Well, I think just from listening to the folks is that on the 411W, um, you're paying $2 to Marches Point and then you're paying $2 to travel on the SCAT, so that's $8 a day if you're going round trip, whereas that's double the, what it would be for Camino. Mm -hmm. 
then can you run, can you drive round trip with your vehicle, pay the gas, own the vehicle, pay the insurance less than eight dollars a day going to emergency? Well, I think I think if gas was at four dollars a gallon right now, these numbers would be significantly different. So that's the thing. Right now, we're paying less than two dollars a gallon, and so it's, it's affecting people's choices. And on to the Route Four Twelve, would you be willing to pay two dollars to travel one way via Island Transit? 12 between Camino Island and downtown Everett. 87% said yes, 13% said no. During a typical week, how many days do you anticipate riding this route? 44% said five days a week, 20% said less than one day a week. primary purpose of your travel. 61% said work. 6% uh, said school. 13.1 leisure, same for shopping. And 6% said medical. Will you transfer to a connecting transportation service at Everett Station? 57% said yes. 42% said no. So there's a significant number of transfers. That's kind of a, a you know, give us a, they're going to transfer, so they're willing to pay for another ride even after they uh, we get what how many percent seventy something that are willing to pay the two dollars to get there. And they're willing to pay for a transfer. And that's because they're going to work. Right. So that's seventy fifty seven percent willing to pay twice. That's an $8 day. If you want to work for her, the job paying you eighty to $100,000 a year, I imagine they are. This board hasn't absolutely closed the door on a possibility, for example, of having a transfer issued for the same day for a round trip, have we? which just on our service, they go in the morning, those that they want to work with for any other reason, paying $2 and getting a transfer, if it's Monday, issued for Monday that day for their return, valid only on that date. I don't recall any well, in-depth yeah, in conversation on that. That would affect, you mean make it a dollar or each way? It would, that's what it yeah. amounts well, to. if you do that, that takes us down to a four percent recovery rate, and that's not acceptable by the state. It's not acceptable by the, the state. state. Said we have to get eight percent on the four twelve. On the four twelve, we couldn't give that a, a trial period to see how much ridership would. I think the whole thing is a trial. The, period. the, the thing based on and the numbers are based on historical riders with a thirty percent loss charge comparison. Well, I think the state needs to know that we're trying, that we're making an effort. The Sound Transit charges two dollars. Two twenty-five. Yes, yeah. yeah. two twenty-five yeah. or two fifty. I think. Two fifty now. Plus, they've got a. Uh, they just increased their sales tax again to one point two percent. What grants would be your philosophy on why our system would charge less than our neighboring system? I mean, I understand the impact on the rider, but why should, as a philosophical question, why should our system recoup less than our neighboring systems in order to make it more palatable for the rider? They're not being concerned about the rider, so why should our system subsidize that concern? Well, for, for one thing, first of all, we're a different size system. Um, you know, and they go to different destination points. You know, I, I think since this is such a radical change from the rural non-payment affair to now charging fares. 
What bothers me, aside, let me digress for one second, I'll make it quick, is the lack of cooperation in some cases from the agencies involved in the area. Skagit now is refusing to accept any transfers, for example. What the hell? I just... Yeah. I, I agree. I agree. You. Yeah. Get no yeah. argument here. Yeah. <clears throat> well, again, I, I just... I mean, I want to... I want our agency to, first and foremost, and I know you all do, I know you all do, be concerned about its ridership here, who we serve and who we try to accommodate. And if the state gets their panties in a nut, you know, we've tried and we continue to try. If, if after a period of, uh, of, uh, of trying to accommodate the people in a fair way, I'm sure we can get our legislators to understand what's going on here and give it some more time. I would hope, anyhow. I, I agree with you, Lance. It's probably one of the things that should be on our agenda uh, as a district. Um, if we get a new uh, director on board and form relationships to improve the, what the mission is, is to provide transportation, seamless transportation. And, and even though they probably don't well, refer to Skagit, they don't have as many people coming from Skagit to Island County, we could, would pro quo, issue transfers to their people too. Um, but I think we have some, we have some progress that we have to make. And I know that Ken has worked hard with uh, the other agencies to try to, to make that connection. I think it's probably going to take some legislative pressure uh, also. I mean, that's really where the force is going to have to come from. We've had it. very good cooperation at the management, the staff level. The agencies were very well together. Community transit, um, walk on the schedule. At our levels, we work great together. We've, we've, we've uh, developed a lot of uh, great ideas and concepts. Um, but then it's uh, additional steps that those things need to be taken is where we're at the head of um, Just another step in a slightly different direction on these uh, percentages and scale about going to work and whether they're going to pay two dollars or one dollar. Um, I used a model of approximately 30 miles to go from Oak Harbor to uh, Marches Point round trip. Roughly 15 miles, would you say, Sean? Um, yeah, between 10 and 15. Yeah, yeah, it's in that range. And at 56 cents a mile, which is, I think, the, kind of the calculation that we use in the IRS, and even, I think, uh, it's pretty close to what it costs to run uh, a vehicle, a private vehicle, uh, for one person. Um, that comes out to about $16.80 round trip. So compare that to the $8 that somebody would have to pay. It's actually more than that going to Mount Vernon. Going to Mount Vernon is uh, roughly a 40 minute drive for us and roughly <coughs> 60 miles, 50 miles round trip. We, we, we can't do it for $8. Uh, so the market into that in addition to parking and somebody has to pay for parking wherever they're going to go to. Um, I know in our conversations with the, the director over at the Skagit, they had an initial fall off of ridership of approximately 30%, 40% initially for about the two or first two or three months and then it came back. Um, uh, it's public transportation subsidized it's not necessarily paid for by all of the taxes are you know our island county sales tax so some people are saying you know we already pay it for it through the sales tax we subsidize that through the sales tax it's not the total cost it, we have strings attached to the brand for the 412 um, where we have a requirement to charge before they'll release the funds, which means we have to pay up front to receive the back payment uh, as we move down the road. And uh, some of these other uh, 
questions that were in here. Why can't we have a system where we don't have to go through this drill every year? Well, somebody reinvent the legislature <laughs> because that's why why we have to do it. They have a biennial budget that we have to go by, and that's just one of the realities. What's our cost per mile? some very good points. Um, we're start up here in this phase of public transportation for us. And if we don't do it correctly, which we're striving to do, um, we can price ourselves right out of business. There are alternative ways. The private sector scares the heck out of me. Can move in. And, and you know they are? Oh, I won't even get started. Some of them. But um, we really need to, and we are doing that, look at it real hard and try to be, I, I foresee someday I will be here, perhaps some of the rest of you in this room will be here. This will expand, our service will expand, our cooperation with our agencies will expand, and in this infancy on these two routes, I foresee the other routes eventually being charged to pay, um, passengers being charged to ride. And the whole system, Orca, will come in here someday. So the changes that will be made for the younger people will look back and say, I remember when they were agonizing over having to charge a fare. That's all. Um, well, uh, I didn't know if you were going to take public comment. We're going to take public comments after your comments. Oh, well, because I got, I got, kind of done. But, well, I'll begin with um, where you were talking. Thanks, Sean. And I agree with you, Rick, as far as when you're looking at cost per mile. But I'm going to tell you how the consumer looks at it. The consumer looks at it, it's going to cost me $6 to get from here to Mount Vernon and they've got a tank of gas. They're not looking at what insurance costs, they're not looking at, at how many miles they're putting on their tires and when the next oil change is. They're looking at, I have gas in my car and I can drive over there and back, and my car gets 20 miles to the gallon, and I can make it over there and back for cheaper than what I can drive. They're not looking at 56 cents a mile, they're looking at what it costs me to drive back and forth for a week. Um, so, well, while it's a good point, when you look at it, that's a business model, not what the consumer is looking at. 
I've been thinking this over long and hard, and the whole fair thing with the 412, we're looking at a fair because the state says in order to get the grant to do the startup on the 412, we must charge the uh, fair and get an 8% recovery, recovery rate. We have numbers from the public that are overwhelmingly in favor of saying, hey, yeah, we'll pay $2 to get the working back. We'll pay a fair to do it. Um, I'm looking at it as far as an express route. And if you look at the 411, which the 411 is kind of a lifeline for people from Tomato to get either to Mount Vernon or back over here to Allen County. Come down to Coopville if they need to go to the courthouse or, or they have something like that. If we're charging a fare there, you're looking at two dollars to get to Mount Vernon, two dollars to get from Mount Vernon to Marches Point, two dollars to get from Marches Point to Whidbey Island. That's six dollars each way. Now you're looking at a twelve dollar round trip fare. So if you're looking for my look on it, and I've studied this long and hard. Uh, I talked with our legislators and our senators. Well, I didn't talk with them done via email. There's no guarantees for, for anything right now. They're just trying to get through this session and not looking down the road. But they did mention bunches of grants that are available, et cetera, et cetera. So I think our grant writer needs to be very busy. But I'm thinking as a test bed, and just throw this out there for, for to chew on. As a test bed, if we were to take and put 412 in with a fare at four runs a day, I realize the $250,000 a year grant only pays for three runs a day. But if we were to take and put four runs a day, that's an additional $88,000. And not charge a fare on 411, leave the 411 run off the grant, which which the subsidy we're getting from the state right now pays the entire cost of that 411. Okay, we're not even using 0.9 funds from there. That's paying that that is paying the entire 411 cost. Um, part of that cost should be coming from sales tax revenues, but we're, we're paying it forward. It's generous and that's good. We would not have to use the startup costs. To outfit the buses for the 411, typically there, I figured I'm tallied up the cost, it's $26,000 that we would save there, that we wouldn't have to, to put out up front money. We could use that to offset that $88,000 for an extra run. Now, I think if we start the 411 up with three runs, the public has said it, I've sat there and said it, I've agonized over this, we're setting it up for failure. If we're going to do a 4 412, we need to set it up for success, and the only way to do that is with four runs. So that would mean us subsidizing out of our point nine funds fifty thousand dollars of that fourth run. So I don't have any of those numbers. Okay. I believe you. Ish. But I I could if we're gonna start talking about subsid adding a route, I wanna know exactly how much that route costs us. If we're gonna talk about not charging on other other routes and continue those routes. I mean, I need to know, I don't know where we're going to get that 88000 or $50,000, and I don't have anything to add or subtract on these sheets. I need us to have all the numbers and information for these conversations if we're going to, if we're going to have them, because I can't uh, jump around and remember data from three meetings ago that I don't, I don't uh, you have. You should have them in your packet. Anyway, well, th that's just where I'm leaning to. I, I'm looking at, I don't, I can't see starting up the 412 with three runs a day because we're setting it up for failure. It doesn't, it makes no sense at all. The public was very how adamant are you about it. For that, though? How, how are you, well, don't. you know, the part that bothers me the most is if we start the 412, then $250,000 a year of that grant goes to Skagit, who's refusing to cooperate with us. I mean, I just, I, what I'm nervous about is making statements like that until I see where we're getting that money from. We have made a commitment as a board to build up three months capital reserve, not to expand our service. We said we would have money in the bank to stabilize the organization first. So now, 
and, and I don't have any numbers in here that show show me what we're offsetting with what. So if we're going to have that conversation, I just need to have all the numbers. Okay, can you help with that? Sure, certainly. Sure. We can uh, work on that and get that out within the next few days. I mean, and I think what we need to know now is what's our cost per mile for the for the organization. And we need to get all the information in one spot so that we can make the best possible decision. I'm going to ask you a question too, uh, either Paul or Kim. Um, what if we initiated a system-wide fare at a reduced amount of, let's say, a dollar a trip. But I, and the reason I mention that is, and you can follow up with like the uh, financial system. Um, I forget what they called their program over there. I was talking to one of the drivers uh, one day uh, while they parked at one of their stops. And they have a system-wide fare where they said everybody pays. Get on the bus, everybody pays. In my recollection, it was a buck and a half to go from Leavenworth to uh, Wenatchee. And then they have trips that go from Wenatchee up the Columbia River, et cetera. But they, they were not differentiating between who rode. It's anybody who got on bus, on the bus, um, on the transit system, paid, including their paratransit. Maybe we need to look at some of these other models to see how their frame builds. Because that's a rural system also. Granted, they have a population base in Wenatchee that's bigger than ours. And that system probably subsidizes their entire system. But everybody who gets on their, their vehicles pays, according to this person who I talked to. <coughs> so, we, remember when we had that review committee come in and make us on what we could afford and what we couldn't and we were clear that what we couldn't afford was a system-wide fare because we couldn't absorb the startup costs in our budget right now and then also it's not a bad conversation to have but we just had a series of public meetings and the two I attended I gave assurances that we weren't having conversations about countywide fares so I try not to look like a liar when I help it and uh, because we as a board had said that the only thing we were considering was connector route fares. So, um, you know, I just would prefer to not go out to the public meetings and then turn around sure. and... Um, I'd like to echo that because the meetings I attended and I assured the public that we absolutely were not discussing going system-wide at this point and that going system wide break right? on the express service if you're doing them on express routes or quote unquote connector routes that alleviates us from a lot of the requirements that a full system consideration would do. We go full system then you've got to have uh, all these things in place for elderly disabled veterans, all these different varied fares, reduced fares, everything else on express routes, you don't need all that. So, FTA guys. are you thinking of express routes, let's say from Oak Harbor to I, I call an express uh, route Clinton. is Oak Harbor, the 411 City, 411 W, and 4 uh, and 412, the connectors. Yeah. Something that's getting on a highway and going somewhere. But not about, not about going down the, the uh, island. No, that's in county transit, and I did not discuss any of that with the public, and I assured them that we were considering that okay. this Anything else before we go to public comments? Let's move this along. I think we've been a conversation down in the south end of this little bit of fairs. It's been publicized quite a bit that we're not going to do it on time. So for right now. Oh, well, yeah, we're going to have a conversation about that. The only thing on the table for the hearing and for deliberation is 411 and 412. Right, right. That's, that's what we have. If you are going to go there, you'd have to start the whole process over. Okay. Ready to go to public comments? and. So we'll open this up for public comments. Anybody has anything to add or questions, you have three minutes. And uh, identify yourself for the record. And Steve McCorkum, Van Wyland. 
know, I was at a couple of those public hearings with Mr. Hamill. You know, I have to agree, setting, you know, starting the 412 with three runs a day is just setting it up for failure. It's just not frequent enough to guarantee anybody a ride. Um, and yeah, the people that are going down there are willing to pay. And I do think we would see much more ridership if we had the fourth run. You know, and I, one of the things on the 411, that the Camano folks have a problem with is the connection to Whidbey midday. We get to Skagit Station uh, at 10.30 in the morning, we can't make the connection to get over to, to Whidbey Island until later in the afternoon. So that's something that, you know, if we could work with Skagit on, it would be great, but right now, that inner island connectivity during the later morning, early afternoon, doesn't exist. Steve, anything else? Yeah. Thank you. Any other comments? 